who lifts our heads. He's the one who made us, and we praise him and thank him that he's remade us. Would you stand together with the choir and the praise team as we rejoice in the one who is coming back for us, for his bride. Let's give him praise and look forward to his return to take us home.
Would you come? Would you come quickly? He came once as a redeemer. He will come again as one who will redeem, will redeem and restore all of mankind and all of the earth to righteousness and how he originally created it. Praise God for that. And when we open the word, when we open the word, every time we open the word, what happens, church? God speaks. God speaks. He speaks to us. We should long to open his word because he speaks, because he has a word for us every single day that he wants us to obey, to follow him in. But we have this truth before us today that he is the one who made it all, despite what all the world says. Open your heart to his truth and allow him to speak to you today as we read his word together. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, and he who formed you from the womb. I am the Lord who makes all things, who stretches out the heavens all alone, who spreads abroad the earth by myself. He is the only God who is creator. He made it all and he made us. And now he's made us again, those who have bowed the knee before him. This is his world. So let's rejoice and praise him and thank him that all of creation was made to give him glory and praise. We were remade to praise him. Thank the Father this morning, our Abba, as we worship him and express our love. This is my Father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings.
praise the Lord this morning. Reason to celebrate God who not only made everything around us, it speaks to us as we enter to worship this morning. And we recognize it's telling us God is there and he is powerful God. And we come to him because we know him by name and recognize that one day he's going to come back and make all things new. And that's what we long for. Not only in our lives, but in this whole created order. And we look forward to that day. But we stop now and we go before the Lord in prayer because we recognize we need him. We need him each and every day. And we cry out and we bring our burdens to him. And we say, Lord, here's the anxious things that are wrestling with in my life. And I just want to give those to you this morning. So I want to invite you to do that this morning as we're praying this morning. Praying for our brothers, uh, Lane Pierman and Bud Weinbarger and Bud Redmond and others that just need God's healing touch. He wove us, he made us in our mother's womb, and he can weave us back together. So we want to pray that he would do that for these men. also want to pray today for our missions offering, for our house, uh, missions warehouse that we're building, and uh, just a reservoir of resources that enable us to spread the goodness of God and the glory of God and the gospel as we do that. And so we want to pray for God's favor on that as well. And also perhaps your burden this morning for someone who needs to know that God is near and not far. And so I want to invite you to intercede and pray uh, that God would open their eyes and help them to realize that they need Jesus and that he can, they can turn to him today. It's not too late to have to put a, your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So if you have a burden this morning, come, let's lay it on the altar. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Praise him because he's the God who made us. He's the God who's made everything around us. And he's the God who's going to make it all new one day. So praise him for that and give thanks for every good thing that he's poured into your life this week. And then let's lay our burdens before him and cry out for the mercies we need as we go through life. Let's pray as we do. Father in heaven, we give thanks today because there's no God like you. You and you alone are the great creator who made all things. God, you are the one who not only made this world, you speak to us, Lord. This world is speaking, Lord. And God, forgive us when we're tone deaf, Lord, when we don't hear the world around us, Lord. And and hear it declaring that there is a great and awesome God who's made everything, Lord, that we see. And Father, you made us and you have a purpose for our lives. And today we, we bend our knee, we bend our hearts. And we say, God, we want to live, Father, for what your purposes are in our life, Lord. And bring glory and honor to your name, Lord. And Father, we pray for, for this opportunity that's before us, Lord, to build this missions warehouse, Lord. And the Lord, just to see it as a, as a resource of reservoirs, Lord, that we can, we can spill into this community around us, Lord. And, and as we do that, Lord, share the gospel and share the good news that, Lord, you are the God who made all things and you're the God who can remake all things. And God, our prayer is that you would just show us favor in this pursuit today. And Father, we also pray for brothers and sisters that just need a healing touch, Lord. We ask that you would knit them back together and give them grace and strength and comfort. And Father, they would sense and know just the, the nearness of a good shepherd, Father, today. And God, as we come to worship you, God, we're, we're praying that you would come, Lord Jesus. It's our desire to see our king. And, and, but we bend our knee because even though we can't see you, by faith we see you. And, and we see you in your word when you speak to us. So speak to us today so that our lives will be made new. Lord, our minds will be renewed. We'll put off old ways of living, fleshly ways of living, and we'll put on a new way that is made available to us through the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We're asking all these things today so that our worship of you might be fragrant, Lord. It might be pleasing to you. We ask this all in Jesus' precious, powerful name. Amen and amen. Amen. Again, welcome to worship this morning at South River Baptist Church. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. And if you're visiting today, you're our special guest. And we just want you to remain seated for a moment so that our church family can come and welcome you into the house of the Lord. We do that simply just by having all of our South River family stand at this time to greet one another. And guess you just remain seated and let us come welcome you properly in the house of the Lord. So South River family, you stand and greet one another at this time.
All right. Thanks for welcoming one another this morning. Guess you can stand with us. Let's gather back together and let's thank God this morning as we continue to worship. Thank him for his grace and that his grace seeks after us and it finds us. In every circumstance in life, he's reaching out and seeking us.
His grace finds us. Let's look to him in prayer. Lord, we thank you. Thank you that your grace, your goodness seeks after us. Lord, when we don't deserve grace, we deserve judgment. We deserve, deserve death, hell, and the grave. But you give your mercy what we, do, what we don't deserve. And God, you, you give us what we deserve. You give mercy. What we don't deserve, you give grace. And you bless us, Lord, over and over again with spiritual blessings, with every blessing. You provide it all for us. You made us, and then you remade us. Thank you, Lord. We celebrate that, and we thank you today for that. Lord, as we give today, help us to give because you've called us to obey you. But God, also let, let us give today out of abundance so that the gospel will go forth as we have opportunity to reach into our community, to, to, um, to feed people, and Lord, to share not just the food that we have in our hands, but to share the bread of life, Jesus, and the truth of the gospel with all that we share physical food with. And Lord, the way we see that we can have the opportunity to do that, Lord, is to have a place to keep all of those goods, Lord, as a tool for the gospel's sake. Lord, may we give in a way that pleases you and, Lord, advances your kingdom today for your glory and for your praise. Would you bring in the harvest, God, so that we might see a spiritual har harvest of souls for your kingdom. We love you. In Jesus' name. your name the mountains shake and crumble at your name the oceans roar and tumble at your name
Thank you, praise team. And we do shout the great name of the Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah Jesus. Praise God. He's our Savior and our King. The children are heading off to Children's Church with Brother David as they go to study God's Word. And I want you to take your copy of God's Word this morning. I'll make it really easy for you to find the passage today, Genesis chapter 1. It's real easy. Just you can open up the inside cover. And that's the first book of the Bible we come to this morning. And be turning there, if you will, because really it's a starting point for us knowing who God is and what He is like. You know, my mama told me, you can only make one first impression, so make it good. And we discover that as we go through life. First impressions are vital for everyday life. I mean, if you're going on an interview, that first impression is really important. When you introduce yourself to someone, uh, that first impression can can have a great significance perhaps in a business decision or in some other acquaintance or friendship. You never know how that impression uh, will go with you or with them and they carry that with you in life. And so people form opinions based on their first impressions and that can lead to success or it could have a negative impact as well. And what happens is our impression is not just merely the words, even our outward appearance can play a pivotal role and how we are perceived and what someone might think about us. And so it's not, it's not of insignificance that in the Bible, when we open it here in Genesis chapter 1, God is making the first impression. If there's a God who speaks to us, what does he say? And what it says to you and says to me is that there's a mental image that should be imprinted on our hearts and minds as God speaks to us this morning. And it discovers, we discover that God created everything around us. Not everyone recognizes that. But God wants that imprinted on every heart and every mind. And when he introduces himself, right here in the very beginning, it says that God created the heavens and the earth. He is the creator of all things. Now that creative ability leaves an impression. Realize this this morning. If nothing was created, we wouldn't know him. That creative ability in God, being the creator, it's not merely that he is the creator, uh, the one who made all things, but the creativity of God and the way he makes things and why he makes things leaves an impression on hearts and minds of individuals. Now, some may suppress that truth, but the reality is God has spoken in creation to impress upon us who he is and what he likes. He's communicating something about his essence, what kind of God he is, what he's like. He's telling you and telling me something about his sheer power that he possesses. He's trying to help us to realize that there's purpose to this world in which we live. Despite the fact that many may reject that, God is saying that and he's trying to get man's attention. And so when God is introducing himself right here at the beginning with this introduction of who he is, he's also communicating something that's fundamental to your relationship and my relationship with him since we are made in his image. And so these first things that you learn about God, being the creator, that there being order in all of his creation, that there being created things that have purpose, we see, listen, there's many around us that are confused today about who they are. They're confused about what their purpose is. Why were they made? And the fundamental reason that is the case is because they have not surrendered to the truth of what God has revealed about himself in creation as the creator. And so this fundamental truth is critical. It's pivotal to you and I having productive lives and having prosperous lives, thriving in life. And when you get this wrong, when someone gets this wrong, life easily gets fouled up. And so this is why it's critical today as we see even a blurring of the genders in the hearts and minds of children. That is a fundamental denial of a God who made us in a particular way with particular purposes. And so this attribute of God not only just being the creator, but the creative one is absolutely essential to us navigating life from the very beginning of who we are made 
and what we were made for. I want you to stand. We're only going to read a few verses. We're not going to go through the whole chapter, of course, because of time. But I want you to see verses 1 and 2 and then down in verses 26 and 28. And hopefully I'll allude to what it refers to there in Isaiah chapter 44, our memory verse for the week. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And down in verse 26 through 28. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have domain over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And Father in heaven, God, I pray today that we will recognize not only that you are an awesome creator with incredible creativity, but Father, may we realize that because you made something, God, we have the ability to know you and to know more about you. And Father, I praise you today, not only that you are the God with all the power to create things, but you're also the one, Lord Jesus, when you return, you're going to make a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness will dwell forever. And God, may we live for that each and every day because we have surrendered to the God who made us and the one who has redeemed us and remade us. We praise you and we thank you and we thank you, Jesus, for giving your life for us. It's in your name we pray this morning. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We want to consider something absolutely essential to our faith this morning. Because as we study these attributes of God, and we consider who God is, and we consider what God is like, we have to understand that He is the Creator with amazing creativity. However, He is not like anything else. God alone is God. There is none like Him. When you and I are made in His image, and we are made like Him, we are not made like Him exactly as He is, but we are like Him in some way ways. When we study these attributes over the past year, what we discovered is you can actually divide those attributes into two categories called communicable attributes and incommunicable attributes. The communicable attributes are those that communicate or can be transmitted to us. There are things that we share with God, but not to the full extent that God has those attributes. Incommunicable attributes are those attributes that are exclusive to Him. There is only one God who is self-sufficient. We're not like that. We are dependent. We are dependent upon Him. We are dependent upon Him for life. He's not dependent upon anything. That's incommunicable. We don't share that with Him. But what we do share with Him are communicable attributes. An example would be God is love. We, we studied that recently. God is love. And in some way, we have the ability to love. But let's be honest, we don't always love perfectly as God loves perfectly. God is a God of justice. He is just. Praise God for that. We have a sense of justice. We want justice. Some want it that they distort it today and call it social justice instead of biblical justice. But the reality is we all realize that there are things that are right and wrong, things that are just, and we usually long for those things when we're living right and right in the eyes of God. But that's a communicable attribute. When we say God is the creator, we are considering that that is something that is communicated to us because God gives us creativity. He gives us the ability to use these minds and to use them in such a way to create things, technology, whether it's a spoon or a car or some digital uh, product. We have the ability to create things and he gave us that ability in order to subdue the earth. And so when we're thinking about God's creative ability, you have to understand, this is the one attribute, listen, that makes it possible for, all, for us to know all his other attributes. Because if he didn't create anything, 
we wouldn't know him. And yet creation is God's act where he alone speaks and does. He brings forth creation for his own glory. He brings everything into existence in this universe. And none of it had any existence prior to his speaking, to his creative word. And so that means God is our creator. He speaks and brings everything into existence. He was not created. He's not like the creation that he made in that way. Everything has a beginning, but God has no beginning. He created the heavens and the earth. Or as Isaiah would say, the Lord is the everlasting God, as we learned last week, the eternal God. And he is the God who was there at the beginning. He's there at the end. And he knows everything in between. And he's aware of all of it. And he's created all of it. With purpose. Now, God, the God who creates, is a person. In fact, in chapter 1 through chapter 2, there's only one name of God that we find, and that's Elohim. Now, there's many other names of God, but what we hear over and over again is when God is introducing himself and saying, this is who I am, he says, I am Elohim. Now, what's amazing about that name is it carries the idea of power. And God is communicating something as he does this, as he is a God, not just a force, but he actually is a person that is a powerful person. And so he speaks, and when we look at creation, it tells us that God has made us in his image, and he's made us for something on this world, a purpose in this world, and he shows by displaying all this, his personal creativity in everything he has made. When you consider all that God has made, I mean, you consider when you look through a microscope or look through a telescope. I mean, you look down at, at the minuteness of all things, the cells that, cons that you and I consist of. You go even a little bit further to just sheer atoms. And then if you go probably even closer than that, we'll find something one day they'll discover, man, there's even more to it. Because we can't understand. It's all a mystery how God even made all this stuff. But he made us as persons to be able to discover these things. You look at the magnitude of it when you look through a telescope. And it just goes on and on and on. Those stars, the massive expanse. I mean, I know Elon Musk wants to go to Mars. But beloved, it goes so much further beyond that. There's billions and billions of stars and solar systems out there and galaxies. And you and I can't even fathom the sheer magnitude of all of it. And yet, you know, our God, he just flung it from his fingertips. He just threw it out there. We can't fathom that. Our finite minds. And the, the, the magnificent of it all. I mean, the beauty of it all. Whether you look through that microscope, microscope or you look through that telescope, the, the beauty and the order of, of the God who has made this personally as he made this, he's introducing us and he's telling you, listen, I'm not just some force. I'm a creator with creativity. And the way that I've made things brings glory and honor to my name. Now, because we share this attribute, with him, we create things, we create technology, we create buildings, we, we create art, we create wonderful, beautiful music. But all of these creations are made out of something that already exists. But when God made everything, nothing existed. He just spoke and it was there. I don't know if you've ever read the, the Chronicles of Narnia. You should read that with your children or with your grandchildren when you have the chance. But when you read the magician's nephew there, what C.S. Lewis wrote, and, and when Diggory and Polly are there, and Aslan comes walking on a, just in darkness, and then all of a sudden he's just this, this lion is speaking, and he says, birds, and there's birds. And he speaks and he says, mountains, and there's mountains. He speaks and he says, there's rivers, and there's rivers flowing. I mean, it's, it's Lewis helping children understand. This is what Genesis is saying to us. This is what Genesis is communicating to us. When God created and fashioned all things, he just spoke and he formed. And he formed this man and this woman in his image. Now, because he did that, that tells us he is a personal God made for relationships. We, we learn about the Trinity later in the fullness of it. Yes, there's Elohim and there's the Spirit. We discover later that there's a son. The Father has a son as well. And, and they were made. They lived in relationship. And they made us as persons to have relationships. Not merely with one another, but also primarily with who? Him. 
We were made for a relationship with Him. And as there's beauty in the created order, there's beauty in relationships when they're rightly ordered by God and for God. And for that to be taking place in your life and my life, we need to realize the God who made all things, who created all things, is a person, and He made us to relate to one another and to Him. Man and woman were made by God. Male and female were created and, and, and only have the ability to reflect his, uh, his image in this. Listen, a male and a female can become one. Two persons can become one flesh. Now, where do you have multiple persons that are one? In the Godhead, where three are one. And so in so many ways, we're the pinnacle of what he has made, what he has created. And we reflect in many ways his image and these attributes that we were, were learning about him. Some of those communicate to us and he communicates them to us so we know how to relate personally with others around us. Wouldn't you agree it's good when we show grace and mercy to others around us? Amen. Isn't it great when, when we realize as individuals we should relate in just ways with the world around us? Amen. I mean, it's good for us to show and share love with one another. These things God made us, and he made us for relationship with one another and ultimately with him. And as his attributes are revealed, as I know who he is, I know how I should relate as a person because I am made in the image of a person. Now, the, the word Elohim is a plural, so that means there's multiple persons there. We know there's three in our understanding of the Trinity, but they're all one essence. They're all one God. And that one God, listen, is powerful. The God who created thing, everything is of great power. Power that cannot be matched. We've already discovered this, that God is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. He has all the power in and of himself. And the amazing thing is, a God of that sheer magnitude of power, when he made something, praise God, he made it good. He made it good. Now, we've messed it up, but he has power that makes things good. And in fact, the whole root of the word Elohim, where God introduces himself here, the root of that term means strong or powerful. And so when God speaks and an entire universe and created order comes into being, that would have to require incredible power and incredible strength. But listen, this is the amazing thing. You and I, when God gives us power and gives us strength and gives us the creative ability made in his image, we don't always leverage that in a right way. But God did. Listen, what, what we realize is God spoke and it merely was. We can't do that. Whether you play with Legos or steel girders, when men use their power to build things, they have to realize their, build, their, their power is limited in some way. For example, if you're a child here today and you have Legos and you're a master builder, right? We love Legos. We love playing with them, whether you get the awesome building sets or just get the great big tub and start putting things together. The amazing thing is, we can't say, red Lego, and a red Lego up here. We, we have them already made, and we create things. When God spoke, he just spoke with power, and there it was, just like that. Now, I, I can't imagine playing with my Legos, because we got a lot of kids, amen? And so you get down in the floor, and you play with those things. But I can't imagine just speaking with my voice, and there it is, and that's what God did. He just spoke, and there was the stuff. And then he took the stuff, and he made things that were good. And everything that he made, at the end of every day, he saw that it was good. It was impressive because of the sheer magnitude of it, but it was also just immediately when it came into being. And when he made it, because it was good, very good, there was no faults in it at all. Now, what's amazing is, Man doesn't recognize that. Man doesn't acknowledge that. The Man doesn't recognize, and yet creation is speaking and saying, a powerful God has made this. Man rejects that. Man tries to suppress that. 
And yet all of creation is speaking. There's a general revelation, Psalm 19. The whole created order, listen, wherever the sun runs its course, as it rises in the east and sets in the west, wherever it runs, as the, as the earth revolves around the sun, wherever the sun's rays fall on the earth, God is speaking. And he's telling individuals on whatever continent or island they're on, there is a powerful God who made all things. Creation is screaming this, and yet we suppress that truth and we don't want to hear it. And yet what the Bible tells us is when you don't want to hear that, you are rejecting the light that God gives us. And Paul would say over in Romans chapter 1, when God introduces himself, he says not only that there is a powerful God, but there is an, a, a person. There is a, a Godhead that is there. You can't, listen, you can't look at the sheer order of everything and all the design and not recognize there has to be a designer behind that. And a force doesn't make that. I mean, if you just use sheer force, I'm telling you, to, to move some dirt, it doesn't come out a, a, in a beautiful sculpture, right? It just comes as a big pile of dirt when you force it. No, no, no. The creator, who is a person, used his power and he shaped and designed things in a way that re reflect and tell us, no, 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 someone made this. Someone made this. This is the great argument. If you're walking down a pathway and all of a sudden you find a watch in the wa uh, on, the walk, uh, on, the, on the path and you pick it up and you start, you take it apart. And this was before digital, okay? And you take it apart and you see all the springs and all the little uh, sockets and everything moving around. And, 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 and there's that little, you know, there's that one that's moving really slow like this. And then there's a, a smaller... Uh, and it's spinning and then there's that little one just going 900 miles an hour someone designed that God did God, this is the watchmaker argument that you know what you look out there and you, sheer, you see sheer design there's a person who designed that a designer and God had the power to design it with purpose and we are responsible for that light that he gives us what we do with it whether we say ah, pfft, I don't believe it by the way, that's the Hebrew word buzz. Buzz. You buzz your lips at God. You scoff at him. Ah, pfft, I don't believe that. You ever heard that before? You tell someone the truth about who God is and what he's done. And say, ah, pfft, I don't believe that. It, it, it's a word that speaks in the Hebrew in a way. Buzz. You buzz God. Don't do that. Don't scoff at him. God who created all things is a person. And he created it with power. And he created it with power purpose he made everything with purpose in fact when he made you and he made me when he made male and he made female he made them with purpose he made them in his image and he made them for relationship and he wove into the fabric of everything purpose and the purpose is to bring glory and honor to his name when he made us in his image he made us as his representatives to have dominion Forces don't rule and, and, and have the ability to decree things over their kingdom, but persons do. And he made us his representatives. You and I, as we navigate this creation that God made, we were made for purpose. And the purpose is to represent him to this world and to bring it under dominion and to have, have, have subdue it. Now that doesn't mean, listen... That does not mean that we exploit the created order for our own profit. It does not mean that we destroy the created order just for our own personal kingdoms and to build things up. What it means is we love the creator and we love the creation, but we don't love the creation more than the creator. We don't worship it. We recognize, listen, God has made it. He's made it with incredible power. He's made it as a person who's designed it with incredible purpose. And we, made in his image, should use our creative abilities, our minds, to think rationally, reasonably, and to create things in this created order, to subdue it, and to use it in a way that is profitable. When God says, be fruitful and multiply, trust me, if you are fruitful and you multiply, you're going to need more stuff to take care of those people. And that's why technology comes into play. God gave us the ability to procreate 
and to create. To procreate, to be fruitful and multiply. Again, a reflection of the creator who made something. We are able to do that in a limited way. But we also have to create things to sustain the procreated things. And that's what God designed us for with purpose, with power. And he did that, as he says there in Romans chapter uh, 1, verses 26 and 27. He made us in his image. And he gave us the responsibility to be fruitful and multiply and have dominion over the created order. And yet when you stop and think about this, who are we that he would even take thought of us? I mean, when you and I really humble ourselves and recognize who God is and who we are, and we put ourselves in the light of who he is and what he's like, you, you think you have to think like David did over in Psalm chapter 8. And this is what David said over in Psalm chapter 8. O oh Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength, because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? Who am I? Who are you that he would even take thought of us? And yet the sons of man that you, you visit them, you made them a little lower than the angels, and yet you crown them with glory and with honor. You have made him to have dominion over the work of your hands and have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, all, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas. Oh Lord, how Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Who are we that God would take thought of us? I mean, when you really understand the powerful God, the personal God, the God of purpose who made everything around us. Who am I that he would be mindful of me? And when you stop and reflect on scripture and think, when the word of God says, listen, he, he, he counts and knows the number of hairs on our head. He, he, he puts our tears in a bottle and is mindful of what we go through in life. The clear message is that there's an amazing God, a powerful God. And the amazing thing is he has compassion to think about you and me and care for us. I mean, it's just too much to fathom. And yet this God who creates all things, he did it because you and I were made for him. We were made to reflect his glory. We don't create our own glory. That's called idolatry. We radiate and reflect his glory here on this earth as his representatives because that's what we were made for around his throne to praise him to glorify him to honor him to, to adore him above all the created things and yet that's what happens we recognize God creates and yet what happens is oftentimes we worship the created stuff rather than the creator and yet we were made for him, made to have relationship with him. In fact, what happens is our lives become meaningless and purposeless and vanity, sheer vanity, when we fail to acknowledge the good creator. You see, this God who creates is a person. And you and I were made for a relationship with him. He has incredible power and he has incredible purpose. Everything was made to bring glory and honor to him. Now here's the amazing thing. I don't know about you, but when I look at my life, I haven't always leveraged everything in my life for the glory of God. In fact, when I've lived for my own glory, typically it's not been glorious in the end. It's actually been quite a mess. And that's because of sin. Now this is the beauty. If you don't recognize that God has the ability to create things, then you probably won't believe that he can recreate things. And that's redemption. Now, this is the amazing thing. The passage in Isaiah that we memorized this week, if you go read that chapter, in the very beginning of that chapter, in the first five verses of Isaiah 44, what it says is that God basically brings forth his children. He creates them from dust. 
pretty amazing. It's a reflection of what you discover over there in the Genesis account when God made man. And he, he brought him forth from the dust. And he shaped him and formed him and <sighs> breathed air into him. God is making a people, his children, for himself from dust. And what's amazing there is also you read that the God who did that is the God who is the beginning and the end. He knows everything in between that's happening. And in fact, he just kind of, he taunts all the, all the idols that are out there, all the false gods, and says, could someone please tell me that, that what the purpose of everything that I've made from beginning to end is? Because I know what it is. I made it. In fact, he goes and he, he has this little, he mocks and ridicules those who worship idols, who go out into a forest that he made and chop down a tree and bring that tree in. And out of half of the tree, they, 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 they cook, cut up some wood so they can make their little stew, their little porridge. And, and then they, while it's getting hot and, and boiling, they sit there and they carve their little idol that they make. And then they set it down and they say, thank you for saving me and giving me food. The sheer foolishness of it to worship the created stuff. And what's fascinating then is when you get later in that chapter, is God is saying, the Lord who made us, it doesn't say Elohim. It says Jehovah, Yahweh. The God who made us and made everything. You see, here's the amazing thing. God didn't just make us, but he's also making his people. He's bringing, he's recreating a people because the first Adam didn't do as he ought. And what God wants is for you and I to do as we ought to do. And the only way that happens is when we surrender and acknowledge he's the God, we're not. He made us. We didn't make ourselves, as the psalmist would declare. And when you do that, God is not just merely a creator. He's the recreator, the redeemer. And what you realize is you live every day depending on him to sustain you. And amazing, he does. You were made for Him. We were made for His glory. You and I were made to live every day of our life, not just in heaven. We were made to live every day of our life right now, dependent upon Him, recognizing that He made us and I am made for Him. And you and I will have no purpose or meaning in life until we acknowledge that truth and then order our lives and recognize whatever time that I have on this earth, I was made for Him. And I just need to make the most of my time. We learned that last week when we talked about the eternality of God and what you were made for, what I was made for. And as you realize that he's got a purpose for you, you start asking him, what's my purpose? What was I made for? And God, I look at what I've made with my life, and the amazing thing is it's not going to last forever. In fact, some of it's not good. And here's the amazing thing. Do you know what you can, I, I can do? When I repent and I place my faith and trust in the God who made me, Jesus, and I trust in him because Paul tells us in Colossians chapter 1 that Jesus is the one who made all things. When God spoke, I think Father just said, Jesus, make it. Boom. And Jesus made it. And actually the Trinity was brooding over the waters. Oh, by the way, it's fascinating there in Isaiah 44 when he talks about the spirit and the dew of the water in the dust. It's a beautiful reflection of Genesis chapter 1. You should meditate on it today and just think about it. Because we're prone, inclined to, to cut down our little idols and worship them. But the amazing thing is what I've, I've made a mess with, when, when it's surrendered to him, he takes those powerful hands and he begins to work all things together for good which is what we discover from the Creator in Genesis chapter 1. That at the end of every day, at the end of six days, He doesn't just see that it's good. When He makes something, it's very good. And if today, if you and I will surrender and yield our life to Him, and we'll just say, Lord, whatever I got left, make something of good for it, He'll do that, and He'll make it in a glorious way to bring glory and honor to His name. And that's why you and I were made for Him. Not for ourselves, not for our own selfish, vain pursuits, but we were made for Him, His designs, His purposes. And God will bring order out of our chaos just as He did in creation, and He will make it have order. But in order for that to happen, I have to surrender. I have to yield. I have to acknowledge that, you know what? Oftentimes, I've rejected the light, and I've not heeded to it. 
But if I've heard God speak today, then I want to put off those fleshly ways of thinking. And I want to renew my mind. And I want to call on his name and ask God to make something of my life for his glory. And the amazing thing is, he's waiting to do that today. But you have to respond in faith. We have to choose to say, all right, I don't know who I am that you would even take thought of me. I don't know who I am that you would send your son Jesus to die for me and to give his life as a ransom for many. I mean, who am I that you would love me that much? Here's who you are. You're made in his image. You're made for him. And he wants you to have a personal relationship with him. And that isn't just in heaven. That begins today. When you and I acknowledge the light and the truth that he is giving to us. Will you do that this morning? I'm going to ask every head to be bowed and every eye to be closed. And the question is, am I taking my life today? And am I recognizing God's purposes in my life? Am I surrendered? Am I yielded to what the Creator made me for? We all were made for purpose. And God wants you and I to realize that today. Now, if I'm living for my little kingdom, if I'm living for what I want to accomplish, then most likely I'm not bringing glory to his name, but I'm bringing glory to my name or the name of someone else. And so today, as our hearts are open before the Lord, is Jesus Christ the Lord of your life? Are you a new creation, one who has repented and placed your faith and trust in Christ? Because the Bible says today that you can have a new life with Christ. You may have made a mess. God can make it good if you'll surrender and yield it to Him. But you have to take that step of faith. You have to choose to believe. God, you're the God who created not just all this creation. You made me. Or as David said, in our mother's womb, we were formed, fashioned, woven together. And you wrote all our days before there was one of them. You wrote them all in a book. God knows your beginning and he knows your end. Why not live it with him? Why not live it in right relationship with him? It's very simple. Just come take the hand of a pastor and say, listen, I want to live my life for Christ. And I want to live in a way that brings glory and honor to the one who died for me. Maybe you're burdened this morning and you just want to pray for someone here on the altar whose life isn't right with God and they, they are denying him it's the fool who says in his heart there is no God it's the fool who scoffs and denies God and pray that God would open their eyes and help them to realize they need to turn to him while there's time if you need to join a, a church and God has led you here to South River Baptist Church maybe you just want to come today and say you know what we need to plant our lives here and lock our arms with, with this other these people of God here and this family of faith and to go and take this message to a world around us that increasingly is denying there's a creator. And we need to bring that light to bear in our community. And so we invite you to come at this time as well. The altar's open. Our hearts are open this morning. God, speak to us and help us to make decisions in response to truth today that bring glory and honor to your name. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Pause for a moment, praise God and thank Him that he, he even takes thought of you and me this morning. Mindful of every little detail in your life. In fact, maybe you need to ask Him for some wisdom or light or guidance there with some of those details. So that you can do things gloriously for His name. Almighty God, we bow our heads today and recognize you're God and we're not. We thank you, Father, not only that you made us, you gave us life. You breathe life into us every day. We breathe in your grace. God, may we breathe out your praise. You're the one who made us, God. May we live with purpose and meaning. God, may we be the, the people in, that influence the culture around us. May we be the people of God that are subdue in the earth. May we be the ones that are taking the resources that are available to us and leveraging them to bring glory and honor to your name. God, help us to live realizing that there's a new creation coming, Lord. This world, help us not to hang on to it, Lord, and, 
and, and hold on tightly to it because, Lord, it's not to be worshipped. And one day it's all going to be burned up. But, God, let us cling to you. Let us live for you. And, Father, may we live in a way that brings glory and honor to the one who gave his life for us. We ask all of this today in Jesus' precious name and for his sake. Amen and amen. If you look on the